this is Dr. Anthony Festmeyer, and in this lesson we will compose a chord progression that demonstrates common chord modulation. We will then take that chord progression and expand it out into three examples of larger forms, rounded binary, ternary, and rondo. Let's get started. Since our chord progression will include modulation, we want to first establish the original key. We will do this by starting with a 1 chord, followed by a subdominant function chord, either 4 or 2, followed by a dominant function chord, either 5 or 7, and then we will return to 1. Let's use a starting key of C major. The next chord in the progression will be our pivot chord, which is also known as our common chord. We will be modulating to the key of the dominant, which is the key of G. There are a few chords in common between the key of C and the key of G, but the most common chord to use as a pivot between these two keys is A minor. A minor is a 6 chord in the key of C and a 2 chord in the key of G. The next chord in the progression should be a dominant function in the new key. Let's go with the strongest dominant function chord, which is 5-7. Now we'll finish off this progression by establishing the new key, beginning with a 1, moving on to a subdominant function, either 4 or 2, moving on to a dominant function, either 5 or 7, and finally back to 1. Now to strengthen the resolution back to 1, I will take each of the 5 chords and turn them into 5-7, also known as dominant 7 chords. Here is the sound of this progression. Now let's take this chord progression and expand it out into our first large form, rounded binary. Binary is a two-part form. We'll call the first section the A section and the next section the B section. I have set up each section as eight measures so they correspond to the small forms that we have studied previously period forms, and successive phrases. For a rounded binary form, we'll add just one phrase of the A section at the end, and we'll call this A prime. Our next task is to take this chord progression and expand it out into our entire form. We will need to do a few things with the progression. For example, we will need to add some extra chords, and we will also need to return to the original key of C during the last phrase, since common practice compositions always return to their original key. Now let's start with the progression for the A section. One thing that's important to note is that common practice compositions often finish in the new key at the end of the first section, meaning that we will resolve with our 5 to 1 in the new key of G by the end of the A section. And that means that our pivot chord will need to come directly before that dominant chord. Now that I've set up this modulation, I'm going to go ahead and compose a chord progression for the first part of this A section. Let's go ahead and take this establishing chord progression and expand it out. Now I could do many things with this chord progression. I could use one chord per measure and that will give me my first phrase of the A section. Or I could take some of these chords and condense them down to two chords per measure and perhaps this will only take up half of the first phrase. That will leave me room for some more creativity in the rest of my chord progression. For our example, I will go ahead and just use these chords one per measure. Now this progression works just fine for my first phrase, but if I want this to feel like it's a question as in period form, I could add a 5 chord at the end of this phrase. From the 5 chord, it would be typical to go back to the 1 chord or do a deceptive resolution up to the 6 chord. I'm going to go ahead and choose to return to 1. 
Now, from the one chord, I could really go anywhere, but to keep some continuity, I think I'll just go to the four chord in the next measure. And from the four chord into the six chord gives us up a third root motion, which is not typical root motion. So I need to put another chord in here for a smooth transition over to the six. If I use the five chord, that will give me a deceptive resolution from five to six, which is a pretty typical progression. Now on to the B section. The B section will be entirely in the key of G. I already have an establishing chord progression, but I can expand this out and use many more chords, including chromatic chords like secondary dominance and secondary leading tones. For the A section, I started with one chord per measure, and I can really do that here as well, but I think I'll change things up and move a little bit faster with the harmonic motion. Now that I'm back to the one chord and I've established the key of G, I could really go anywhere from here. I could use another diatonic chord from the key of G, or I could use a chromatic chord like a secondary dominant or a secondary leading tone chord. For our example, I will go ahead and use a 7 fully diminished 7 of 2. And that is a G sharp diminished 7, which will lead beautifully to the A minor chord. It also creates this interesting chromatic motion in the bass line. Now, to create another question and answer feel as in a period form, I could go ahead and end this phrase with a 5. Now, from the 5 chord, I could return to the 1, just like I did up here in the A section, but let's go ahead and use that deceptive resolution this time. And that's the E minor chord. Now, to finish out the B section, I'm going to go back and do something that we did in a previous lesson. I'm going to go ahead and finish this off with diatonic chords, and then I'll go back and see if I can add in a secondary dominant chord. 6, 2, 5, 1 is a very common diatonic chord progression that uses all down a fifth root motion. Now let's try inserting one or two secondary dominant chords. One place that I could use one is right here before the two chord. A 5, 7 of 2 in this key would be E7. I could also use one here before the 5 chord. A 5, 7 of 5 would be A7. Now we will finish off our chord progression with one phrase from the A section. Keep in mind we're composing a rounded binary form. Binary form is A followed by B. Very often the A section and the B section will be repeated, so we would have A, A, B, B. For rounded binary, we just add a little bit of the A section at the end. Here we're just using one phrase. So I'm going to go ahead and just take these first four chords so that I end with an authentic cadence in the key of C, a 5-7 to 1. Now you may have noticed that I did not do another common chord modulation when I did this modulation at the end back to the key of C. Instead, I did a direct modulation also known as a phrase modulation. I ended this phrase here, the end of the B section, on the one chord, and then just went directly back to the key of C and established that key. Let's go ahead and hear this progression. Next, we will take this chord progression and we will rework it into ternary form. Ternary form is A, B, A. So I will start by getting rid of the A prime section that we have here at the end. Next, I will copy the A section and paste it at the end. 
Now, the only issue that I have with this second A section is that it ends in the key of G. So I really just need to rework it so that it ends in the key of C. As I review the last three chords of my progression, I notice that I go to the sixth chord. Now, from the sixth chord in the key of C, I could easily go to the five chord in the key of C, which would give me G7. And from there, I could return to one, giving me an authentic cadence. Now we've reworked this chord progression into a ternary form that begins and ends in the key of C. Let's hear what this sounds like. The last form that we'll take a look at is known as rondo form. A standard rondo form follows the structure of A, B, A, C, A. With this ternary form that's already laid out here, I have the first A, then B, and then the second A section of a rondo form. This first A section modulates to the key of G, for the B section, but the second A section stays in the key of C. For the rondo form, I will go ahead and add a C section to this that modulates to the relative minor of C, which is A minor. Then I will return to the A section at the end in the key of C, and I'll set it up just like the second A section. So here we have the setup for the last few sections of the rondo form. The A section that is complete, and then the setup of eight measures for the C section. The C section will be in the relative minor of A minor. Now I can modulate to the key of A minor in a couple of different ways. The easiest way would be through a direct modulation, where I just start on the A minor chord and I compose a progression that's in the key of A minor. Since this is the beginning of a new section, and the previous section ended with an authentic cadence and on the one chord, I could easily just modulate into the key of A with no transition. The other possibility would be to do a common chord modulation where I use a chord that is in common between the key of C major and the key of A minor, and I follow that chord with the dominant chord in the key followed by the one, and then move on in the key of A minor. Let's go ahead and try the common chord modulation. So there are a few different chords that are in common between the key of C major and A minor. A typical chord to use would be the D minor chord. D minor is 2 in the key of C, and it's 4 in the key of A minor. With the common chord modulation, that pivot chord would be followed by the dominant in the new key, in this case, E7. I can either put that here on beat 3, or I can put it in the next measure if I follow typical harmonic rhythm. I'll go ahead and put it here. I will then follow with a 1 in our new key of A minor. I will go ahead and put this in measure 3. Now I will go ahead and establish the key of A minor with a subdominant, dominant, and then back to 1. Now I could have ended this phrase on the 5 chord, setting up this section to have that feel of a question followed by an answer, given what we know of as period form. Both our A section and our B section follow period form. Here I chose instead to end with the one chord, leaving it so that it doesn't feel like a question phrase. This is setting us up for what is known as successive phrases, just simply two phrases put together to make the section where it doesn't necessarily feel like a question followed by an answer. 
Now for the final phrase, I could really do anything that I want in the key of A minor, including using some secondary dominant or secondary leading tone chords. I think what I'll do is I will go ahead and use a similar progression to what I have here, but I try to add some interest to it. So I will go ahead and start on D minor. I will also put E7 in the second measure of the phrase. But I think I'll put a secondary leading tone chord here, a D sharp fully diminished 7, leading me into the E7. So far, our harmonic rhythm has always been either whole notes, so a chord lasting a whole measure, or half notes with two chords per measure. It is possible to use a harmonic rhythm of quarter notes as well, where the chords are falling on the beat. Composers often use a sped-up harmonic rhythm as they're moving towards a cadence. Our cadence will be here at the end of the phrase. So I will use some quarter note rhythms in this measure. I will go ahead and start with the A minor, just like up here. But on beat 2, I will use an A7 chord, which is a 5, 7, a 4. I will follow that with 4. I will then move this E7 to the last beat, giving me a strong ending on the one chord with A minor. And we return to the A section for the final time with a direct modulation. Here is the sound of the chord progression for the entire rondo form. <laughs> 